こんにちは。私はホーコンです。今日は日本語について学びます。Hello, my name is Hokon and today we will learn about Japanese. Well, a little bit more about Japanese. So if you remember, if you watched my previous episode,、uh, you know there are three main ways of writing, three writing systems for Japanese known as kanji, ch- Han character, Chinese characters that are used in Japanese. Both for the meaning of the character in Japanese words and for the meaning and also for the pronunciation of Chinese loan words.、Um, there are two different systems of writing syllables or morai、uh, based on quite a limited number of possible syllables in Japanese. There's a sort of a two, there's one that looks a bit like simplified kanji, very angular. Shapes, which is known as katakana and is primarily used for foreign loan words that are not from China,、uh, also for business names. And then there is hiragana, which is the more cursive, rounded,、uh, continual kind of writing, which is used for、uh, Japanese words that are not written with kanji. It's used for grammatical endings, particles, and、uh, yes, etc. So, those three systems.、Uh, today, we are going to look first of all at the syllable system of Japanese. Japanese has a very limited number of syllables,、um, uh, although I shouldn't really call them syllables because、um, technically they aren't always.、Uh, let's call them a unit of sound、uh, and a unit of sound over time because it's usually.、Um, Has the same length of time for each syllable. So you can call them syllables, but think of them as, as also a unit of spoken time. So in Japanese, all syllables are either a vowel or they're a consonant plus a vowel, or they can also be the consonant N. So that is.、Um, Quite a useful limited、uh, selection of, of syllables we have. So, and they're all based on the five vowels of Japanese. So, let's start with the five vowels of Japanese. And they are A, I, U, E, and O. Five vowels, very simple.、Uh, these are pronounced quite logically. Uh, A, E, U. It's not pronounced like the English U. It's、uh, if you have an English U, U, you round your lips. In Japanese, it's pronounced without the rounding of the lips, U.、Uh, if that's hard for you to do, just try to stretch your smile when you say it, U, 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 U.、Um, Or grin rather, not smile. It's very hard to smile. And, ooh, 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 ooh.、Um, so, yeah, A, I, U, E, E, O. A, I, U, E, O. And all the other syllables in Japanese end in one of these vowels, apart from N, of course, which can be its own syllable.、Uh, And the way you usually list the alphabet, I suppose we can call it, is by starting with A, E, U, E, O, and then you take all the lines of the different consonants that you can add on. So the first line next to after the A is the K line. So you add a K. So you get Ka, Ki, Ku, Ke, and Ko. And then you get the S line, Sa, C, except there is no C in Japanese.、Um, now, in some ways of transliterating Japanese, you see it written as C, and sometimes in phonemic spelling as well. But it's always pronounced as she, and that is also the most common way to transliterate it into Japanese is to write actually S H. I and it becomes less confusing, it's easier to read as well for a foreign reader. So, sa, she, su, se, so 
then it's ta, the t t line. So ta, t, except there isn't a t either in, in Japanese. Um, it is chi. So it's a bit like the, the t version of, of s there. So shi and chi instead of si and t. So ta, chi, tu, except there is no tu either. Um, it's always tsu. So ta, chi, tsu, te, to. Uh, and then is the end line. Na, ni, nu, ne, no, no surprises there. Uh, H line. Ha, he, who, except there is no who either in Japanese. Um, now, there is, in some spelling systems, you probably would write who, but the most common way to transliterate it is as fu, but it is pronounced in a way more in the middle between who and fu, you might say. So it's a bit like who, 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 who. It's almost like a breath, a sort of puff of air. Uh, and you have that friction between the lips um, to pronounce it. So, hu, hu, hu. Um, and then it's he, ho. Uh, and it's the M line. Ma, mi, mu, mi, mo. The Y line, of course, the Y is a consonant. It's more like the consonant, uh, actually, if, if you pronounce it without a J thing, it's, it's phonetically you say it's a J, which is pronounced Y. So uh, it is a consonant. So it is Ya, Yi, except there is no Yi in modern Japanese. So uh, it used to be, so I'll put that in brackets. Uh, you. Yeah, also there's no ye in modern Japanese. Um, and you, I believe possibly there is actually still ye and ye in Okinawa. I think there are some varieties of Japanese because Okinawan is considered quite different to a regular Japanese. Um, I think so. Um, somebody comment on that if they know. Uh, so only three letters really on, on that line there. Then it's the ra line or the r line rather. Ra, di, du, re, and udo. And you'll notice the r is it's um, your tongue is quite forward in the mouth. It's it's almost it's like it's almost touching the teeth really. So so it's almost like a d sound. So you can imagine somewhere between an r and a d. So ra ra ra, adi masen adi masen. So it's um. Um, of course, you don't have to do it precisely like a Japanese person, but that's how I was taught how to do it. So it's very close to a D sound, actually. Very close to a sort of dental D sound. Um, uh, and then it's the W line. Um, again, you might say W, a W. It's not really a, a consonant, but it's um, it varies a little bit. So that is W. And there is no longer a we in Japanese. Um, I think there used to be. Um, there's no longer a wu either. There's no longer a we. Um, and there is no longer a wo. But the wo has survived because um, as a grammatical particle, um, it has gradually turned into o. So usually when we write Japanese now on this line we say wa o and then on the same line we often add next to this the n. So these are the basic syllables of Japanese and there aren't that many of them. If you look at uh, for instance English there are many many times more possible syllables. So a i u e o ka ki ku ke ko sa shi su se so ta chi tsu te to na ni nu ne no ha hi fu he ho 
Another thing you might notice, the he, he is often pronounced as he, 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 he. Actually, there's no sort of he sound at all, it's she. So in, uh, for instance, a word like uh, a human being, hito, or hundred, hyaku. Um, so it's um, it's quite a different sound to what you might expect. And if you hear somebody say, talk about the uh, the emperor from the Second World War in Japan, uh, and often they would call him Hirohito. And in Japanese, he would say Hirohito. So you have both the pronunciation of he and you have the pronunciation of hi, shito, hiroshito. Um, so that just depends on, on the context as well. So ha, hi, fu, he, ho, hu, he, ho, uh, ma, mi, mu, me, mo, ya, yu, yo, ra, ri, ru, re, ro, wa, o, n. And those are the basic syllables of Japanese. And by basic, I mean that there are ways to modify these uh, to make them into something else. Um, you have two sort of characters, sort of, uh, what do you call them now? Diacritics, uh, sort of small characters you can add onto other characters to change them. So uh, I'll just give an example now. So this is ka here, is written like so. Uh, but if you add a little, it looks a bit like uh, quotation marks, it becomes ga, it gets the voiced version. And you can do the same with the S line as well. So you get ga, gi, gu, ke, go, za, ji in that case. There's no ji in Japanese, it becomes ji. So za, ji, zu, ze, zo, da, G again, so you have actually like two different G sounds in Japanese, but they are both used. And the reason is that when you do this voicing, very often it is actually a kind of um, um, sound change that happens because of the phonetic environment. So you can imagine that a word that is um, uh, like mountain, one of the pronunciations of mountains is sound. But in some contexts, as a depending on what comes before it, it can become zan. So and that can happen with other sounds as well. So these are the sort of voiced or varieties of the same syllables often have a, a sort of very close connection to the original. So uh, da ji ju de do. And then it's uh, the H sign is a bit particular there because when you uh, put the quotation marks, the uh, the voicing mark, I should call it. I'm not sure what name. I'm sure it has a name, but I don't know what it is. On the H line, it becomes a B. So it is ba, b, bu, be, bo. And then there's addition. There is a another mark you can put on, which is <clears throat> excuse me, a little circle instead, like so. And then it becomes pa, pi, pu, pe, po. Um, so those are the sort of diacritic marks that add more letters to the syllabary. Um, so those are the sounds that are with the extra voicings, of course, that are the, all the possible syllables of modern Japanese. Except there is actually one more thing to point out as well. If you take a something from the E column here, so ki, shi, chi, ni, hi, mi, ri, gi, ji, ji, bi, pi, and you add a ya, a u, or a yo, it becomes uh, still a syllable, but if you imagine we have ki plus ya equals kya. And when you do this, you would write the character for ya, you, and your smaller. So it is a uh, big ki, normal size, plus a small ya character equals. Yeah, and I'll not confuse you by writing the characters just yet. I'll do that later. So, yeah, and you can do that with all these. So you get get sha, you get ja, nya, 
hia, bia, pia, mia, ria. Um, quick recap, we have five vowels and we have, and they combine with the a very small set of consonants, um, some of which can also get a voiced version and to com to create the syllables. And then you also have N, which sort of stands a little bit on the side of it all. And that is the syllabary. And I'll also, this episode, I want to get started on the actual characters. So let's do the first five of hiragana. And of course, hiragana is used for the Japanese words and for grammatical endings, etc. And a, i, u, e, o. And so we start with a horizontal line. We do a vertical line, curve a little bit to the right. And then we start up here about, and we go across and around. It's a bit like, a, it looks a bit like a fish now. And then we curve back again, like so. And that is a. And then we have e. And it's a sort of diagonal line like so, a little bit of a hook there to sort of show that we are going down and up there. Uh, U is one of the hardest to write, I think, because it's so hard to make it look nice. It goes like this. And then it's E, starting also with a sort of a slightly downward stroke there. And then finally we have O, which starts like A, line across, going down. But instead of turning right there, it goes up there, round, and then we go up here for a little bit of an extra squiggle. So that's our A, E, U, no rounding, E, O. And those are the five first characters of Hiragana. And uh, it's good to just keep practicing these, of course. Um, these aren't perfect, but they're serviceable <laughs> and uh, it's a good idea to just keep practicing writing these over and over and over again it's uh, so yeah so these are the characters and also it's good to look out for the ones that have similarities because it might help you remember uh, like the u and the air they both start with the same sort of bit and the o and the r they both start in a similar fashion as well and there will be other similarities as you go down the, the syllabary um, so I'll start with those, uh, so learn those for next time, and uh, I'll see you again in my next episode where I will do more hiragana characters. I'll probably do two more lines, I think. Yes, I'll do that. So uh, thanks for watching, domo arigato gozaimasu, and I will see you next time. If you enjoyed this, please like, share, comment, subscribe, join me on Patreon, all those things, and uh, add this to your public playlists, uh, add it to social media if you want to share it with someone else, and I'll see you next time. So, sayonara, bye-bye.